Have you ever heard the whispers of the unseen dancing on the edge of your mind? Linger on this thought. Dive into its depths. Picture a midnight convocation, a clandestine congregation of comrades, knotted together by the unbreakable bonds of friendship. Their eyes are as wide as saucers, sparkling with childlike curiosity, and their hearts pound like drums in a rhythmic symphony of anticipation. They huddle together, their bodies casting long obscure shadows on an ancient worn-out wooden floor that groans under the weight of the palpable tension that fills the room like dense fog. The flicker of a single candle, the room's only source of illumination, throws a ghostly, otherworldly glow on their eager, expectant faces. Each one of them is mesmerized, drawn in like moths to a flame by the mysterious and enigmatic object that sits like royalty at the center of their circle, a Ouija board. It's an object of times long past, a gateway to the unseen, a bridge that links their world to the one that is invisible yet invariably present. Laughter, pure and infectious, reverberates through the room, a symphony of casual conversation and light-hearted banter hanging in the air like a delightful melody. Their voices rising and falling in a playful, unruly symphony ricochet off the old peeling wallpaper that guards room secrets within its intricate labyrinthine patterns. They regard the Ouija board as a mere parlor game, an instrument of amusement to fill the nocturnal hours. Their naive and blithe approach to this ancient tool downplays the true weight of the situation, the sanctity of the ritual they were about to unknowingly commence. Their ignorance is bliss indeed, but it is also an unwitting step towards a terrifying abyss. They toy with the planchette, their fingers tracing the age-old wooden piece with an air of casual indifference. Their laughter crescendos, their chatter amplifies, but the room descends into an icy chill, the shadows darkening ominously. They are mere inches away from unlocking a door to a realm they know nothing about, a world where the fabric of reality weaves itself with the supernatural, where the curtain separating the living and the dead becomes gossamer thin. And with a single naive question, they unknowingly flung open the door's doors to a realm shrouded in darkness. An innocent question, a simple curiosity that spiraled, snowballing into a vortex of events from which they could not untangle themselves. A portal, a doorway to a world unseen, unfathomable and absolutely terrifying. Their laughter, once a joyful symphony, becomes a hauntingly silent echo. Their chatter, once the room's melody, morphs into a chilling hush. Their playful diversion, their harmless entertainment, warps into a fearsome reality. With a single question, they have beckoned the unseen into their world, and there is no turning back. As the planchette moved, the room's temperature seemed to plummet, the air around them growing colder, denser, as though someone had let in a chilling draft from a crypt. What was once a lively atmosphere, filled with the warm glow of camaraderie and cheerfulness, was slowly transforming. The light-hearted banter and chuckles that once echoed off the walls were rapidly replaced by an atmosphere so thick with tension it was almost palpable. Their jovial laughter was replaced by an ominous quietude, as stifling as a heavy woolen blanket engulfing them all. The friends, once a bundle of effervescence and carefreeness, found themselves shrouded in a cloak of icy fear, born from an unknown source. Every shift of the planchette was like a cold finger tracing a spine-tingling message on the board. The messages spelled out terrifying possibilities they had never even considered. Each word seemed to send waves of bone-chilling terror terror washing over them, draining the room of its former gaiety, replacing it with a fear that snaked its way into their very souls. Eyes widened in terror, bodies rigid with fear, hearts pounding like war drums in their chests. They realized they had awakened a malevolent presence they couldn't control. This wasn't just any presence, but an entity, one that seemed to feed off their fear, growing stronger with every terrified gasp they took. Each whisper which at first seemed like a harmless gust of wind gradually intensified, morphing into a tumultuous storm of hostile intentions. This malevolent force was unseen, yet its icy touch was undeniably felt by all. This entity, this uninvited intruder, seemed to play them like puppets, reveling in their mounting apprehension and terror. The room, once echoing with laughter and jocular exchanges, was now a stage for this sinister force to perform its terrifying act. The sounds of joy and shared jokes had been replaced by a deafening silence, filled only by the echoes of dread. Their laughter, their smiles, their cheer, all were swept away by a tidal wave of pure terror. 
Each friend was manipulated by fear, trapped in a nightmarish reality they hadn't signed up for. The planchette moved again, each of its movements sending ripples of terror through each individual. Their laughter was replaced by torment, their smiles by stark terror. Each face was a mirror reflecting the same fear. Each heart pounded with the same dread. The jovial setting was replaced by an eerie silence that bounced off the walls. The cold whispers of an entity far more terrifying than anything they could ever fathom. The room, once filled with laughter and light, had now become a dimly lit stage for an ominous uninvited. The spirit, once a whisper, now roared in their minds, an unbearable symphony of terror. It was suddenly as if a once gentle zephyr had mutated into a catastrophic hurricane, ripping through the tranquil fortress of their subconscious with an unyielding rampant fury. The friends, all four of them, found themselves trapped in the vortex of this psychic maelstrom their hearts pounding like tribal war drums reverberating through the cavernous halls of their dread. In their desperate struggle to close the portal, their movements became a chaotic ballet, a dance of terror. Their hands trembled fiercely as they fought to control the planchette, its trajectory determined by the tempestuous gusts of the spirit's wrath. It was a frenzied tango of desperation, orchestrated on a stage where the penalty of a false step was too horrifying to envision. They chanted, their words of supplication echoing into the storm, a desperate hymn seeking sanctuary. They pleaded, their voices fragile against the gale of the spirit's roar like porcelain ornaments threatened by an unyielding storm. Each word, each plea was a testament to their terror, their hope, their steadfast determination not to yield. Then, they demanded. They roared back at the entity, their voices now tempered by desperation, bolstered by fear. They were not pleading anymore. They were asserting. With every shouted command, they pushed back against the tempest, fastening themselves within the storm, refusing to be swept into oblivion. But the spirit, thriving on their terror, retaliated with a chilling ferocity. It clawed at the confines of their souls, its spectral talons eager to shred their resolve, to tear apart the weave of their bravery. It was a predator, a monstrous apparition, and they were its prey. The battle was savage, a desperate tug of war between the living and the dead each side straining against the other, their struggles reverberating across the ethereal plane, a testament to their indomitable wills, the living, fueled by fear and the primal instinct to survive, the dead, driven by rage and bitter resentment. It was a conflict as ancient as existence itself, waged on the psychological battlefield of the mind. Finally, the board fell eerily silent. The tempest receded, the wrathful storm of the spirit's fury diminished, leaving behind an icy calm that chilled their spines. They thought they had won, that they were safe. They exhaled a collective breath they didn't realize they were holding. Relief swept over them, cold and piercing as the reality of their victory began to permeate their senses. But were they? Were they truly safe? Or was this just the deceptive lull before the real storm? They had touched the other side. They had made contact, but at what gruesome cost? As the dawn broke, they believed they had finally escaped the grip of their horrifying ordeal. But was it really over? This question echoed in the hollow depths of their wearied minds, casting a dense fog of doubt over the fragile glimmer of hope that had been kindled with the first precious rays of daylight. An icy shroud of uncertainty enveloped them, palpable and intrusive, seeping into every crevice of their consciousness like an uninvited phantom. It tainted their fleeting sense of relief turning the honeyed taste of their supposed victory into a bitter and unresolved enigma. They were merely a group of friends, guileless and unprepared for the chilling world of spirits they had inadvertently disrupted. The Ouija board, bought on a lark, intended as a whimsical feature for their weekend revelry, had turned out to be an instrument they had huddled together in the faint wavering candlelight, summoning unbeknownst to them a force malignant and uncontrollable a spirit harboring nothing but chaos and despair. Despite the gnawing fear that consumed them, they retaliated. Harnessing the very dregs of their tenacity and resourcefulness, they believed they had exorcised the spirit. But as the morning sun began to ascend, bathing the sky in a warm palette of orange, their temporary relief was tainted. Doubts began to intrude, casting long foreboding shadows over their supposed victory. Was the spirit truly banished as they had dared to hope, or was it merely dormant, biding its time, ready ready to spring forth when they were most vulnerable? Soon their heartbeats were the only sound slicing through the unnerving silence of the dawn. 
their hearts hammered in their chests, each pulsation a chilling echo of the haunting question. Their eyes darted around their surroundings, perceiving danger lurking in every unremarkable shadow. The echoes of laughter and camaraderie were replaced by a deafening silence, each friend isolated in their own thoughts, grappling with the terrifying unknown. And so, the question remains, did they evade the curse of the Ouija board, or are they eternally chained to the malevolent spirit they had unwittingly released? No one was equipped to provide a definite answer. Each friend was suspended in a chilling limbo of uncertainty, their futures shrouded in potential danger and tragedy. The laughter and lighthearted banter of their previous gatherings now felt like a distant memory, replaced by an omnipresent dread that the spirit's shadow was destined to loom over them eternally. As the sun climbed higher in the sky, the friends tried to return to their normal lives. But normalcy was a distant dream, a mirage that faded with each passing moment. The spirit they had thought they banished was far from gone. It was merely biding its time, weaving its dark threads into the fabric of their existence. Their lives, once filled with joy and laughter, were now overrun with terrifying phenomena. Objects moved on their own, strange whispers echoed through their homes, and chilling apparitions haunted their dreams. Each incident, each eerie happening was a stark reminder of the irrevocable mistake they had made. Reality dawned upon them slowly, a cruel and relentless sun. They were forever bound to the spirit. Their innocent game had transformed into a relentless nightmare, an inescapable labyrinth of fear and despair. The spirit was not just a visitor in their lives, it was now a part of them an eternal bond that they could never sever. Despite their desperate attempts to seek help, to break free from the spirit's chains, their efforts were in vain. The spirit was far too powerful, its grip on their lives far too strong. They were trapped, doomed to live in a world that was a terrifying blend of the real and the supernatural. And so, they were left to live in eternal fear, forever bound to the malevolent spirit they had unwittingly unleashed. Their laughter was silenced, their joy extinguished. Their lives were no longer their own, but merely a stage for the spirit's malevolent game. Their story serves as a chilling reminder. Some doors, once opened, can never be closed.